capsule is replaced. Or the flexure lock nut loosened. A flexure lock nut adjustment must be made before beginning a calibration. Arrange the current calibrator for calibrating a force balance transmitter. With the flexure lock nut loosened and with no differential applied to the transmitter, adjust the zero to exactly 10 milliamps. Tighten the flexure lock nut. This should be done carefully. Observe the meter. If the output changes by 1.25 milliamps or less, Adjust the transmitter zero to bring the meter back to 10 milliamps. If the output changes by more than 1.25 milliamps, repeat the procedure by again loosening the lock nut setting the zero at 10 milliamps retightening the lock nut and testing the meter deflection if the meter deflection continues to be above 1.25 milliamps recheck that the capsule alignment is correct in the meter body Once the flexure adjustment is complete, install the quarter inch plug. We are now ready to calibrate the transmitter to zero to 400 inches. With no pressure input to the high side, adjust the zero for 10 milliamps. With 400 inches applied to the high side of the transmitter, adjust the span to get 50 milliamps output. With the exception of the new range, finish the calibration with the same procedures we used for calibrating to the 150 inch range. The calibration for the 4 to 20 milliamp E13 transmitter is identical to that for a 10 to 50 milliamp one. The only difference is the milliampere setting for the low and high end of the range. We will next make a field range change and calibration of the E13 force balance transmitter. Secure a work permit to do the job. This includes a determination as to whether the system is intrinsically safe and the area classification. The 10 to 50 milliamp transmitter is suitable for class one groups C and D, Division I, but only when the cover is in place. If the transmitter is in a control loop, the controller must be placed on manual. Remove the transmitter from service by closing the high and low pressure impulse valves at the meter manifold. And opening the equalizing valve. We will change the range from 0 to 50 inches to 0 to 100 inches. The field range change should be within the limitations of the contained capsule.
depressure the cell body by opening and closing the low and high side vents or valves. Connect a suitable calibrator to the high side of the transmitter. And open the low side vent. Remove the DC power from the transmitter loop. Disconnect the transmitter red and gray leads at the meter. Connect the 8121 current calibrator for calibrating the transmitter. Calibrate the transmitter for 0 to 100 inches using similar procedures as we used in the shop. Remember, though, that neither the 8121 current calibrator or the 10 to 50 milliamp E13 are intrinsically safe. On completing calibration, reconnect the transmitter red and gray wires and re-energize the loop. Other items in the loop can be checked at this time. The final calibration is never better than the entire loop calibration. A very accurate calibration should be made for computer inputs. Never calibrate a transmitter to a recorder. unless you are positive an accurate calibration has been made for the particular loop item. The computer input is measured with a digital voltmeter. The computer voltage input span versus the milliampere output span of the transmitter is determined by the resistance value of the computer resistor. And the output span of the transmitter. With zero differential pressure applied to the high side of our transmitter, the DVM should read the low end of the computer input span. Here it is reading 100 millivolts. Because our computer input resistor is 10 ohms and our transmitter output is 10 milliamps at zero differential. Next, apply the maximum of 100 inches to the transmitter. The computer input is 500 millivolts. Some plants may desire that the zero and span of the transmitter be trimmed to make the computer inputs exact. This should be done with caution. The 8121 current calibrator is a very accurate test set. If we get a perfect calibration in the field, and the computer inputs are very far out, it is best to locate the trouble and correct it. If we know that all the items in a transmitter loop are okay, 
It is permissible to set the zero and span of a transmitter by using the computer inputs only. Of course, field to control center communications are necessary. After completing our zero to 100 inch calibration, remove the test equipment, and recommission the transmitter. Don't forget to put on the new range tag. And clean up the area. Now work exercise number eight in your workbook.